What is up, bros and brats? I'm Ink Slasher, and today we got a massive update across the board for Call of Duty, including Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered, and Black Ops 3. Very little for Black Ops 3, but we did get some information what we can expect to come in Black Ops 3. So basically, there is this new event. It's called the Days of Summer event, and what it is is an event across all of the different Call of Duty games in recent times. So it includes Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered, and Black Ops 3. And today we got new stuff in both Infinite Warfare and Modern Modern Warfare Remastered, and actually quite a bit of stuff. So today, I'm going to clear up all of the confusion, because if we're being honest, I really don't think Activision, Infinity Ward, and all of these companies did a very good job at explaining what's going on, so I'm going to do it for them. So as of today, the Days of Summer event officially started. Now this event, like I said, takes place across all three games, but as of today, only two games got new stuff, Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered. As far as everyone asking what's going on with Black Ops 3, Black Ops 3 starts on the 11th of July. On the 11th of July, they have announced a couple of new things that are going to be coming to the game. There's going to be new summer items coming to the game, so you can expect cosmetic gear for your specialist characters, you can expect a brand and new limited edition camo, kind of like the Void camo that we recently saw. And on top of that, I am guessing, they have not announced this, but I'm guessing that there's going to be a new community event. I'm guessing that there's going to be new weapons, including new melee weapons and ranged weapons. And on top of that, possibly even a new triple play. It seems like they are really trying to make a big thing out of this event. And this event is going to be spanning five weeks. So starting now till the end of July. So we're going to be getting a lot of new content across the board for Call of Duty games. After that, we got Modern Warfare Remastered, and as far as Modern Warfare Remastered, I think today is just the big day for Modern Warfare Remastered. I don't think we're really going to be getting anything too much more than this for MWR, but we'll have to wait and see. So, what we got was, first of all, a brand new map. Basically, they took Bog and put it on a beach, and they did change some lines of sight and that kind of stuff, but overall, the only thing that they really did was put it on a beach. On top of that, they also announced that they are going to be doing prop hunt alone on bog with new items including like kind of beach floaties and that kind of thing. And finally, they added three new weapons. So sorry for the crappy images I got here, but this is really all I could find, and I haven't had time to download the update. It's a 13 gig update, so very large. But as far as the weapons, we got the Barrett MK8. This is an LMG with a high rate of fire, and is apparently effective at medium to long range, which is kind of odd, because normally high rate of fire weapons are actually better at short range, but like I said, I haven't got my hands on this yet. The next weapon we got is the Rangers, and no, you didn't hear me wrong, I said Rangers, not Ranger, because these two shotguns are used akimbo. So if you guys don't remember, this was actually a gun back in Modern Warfare 2 that most people, I would say, used akimbo, so that's why they brought it into MWR. I'm really curious to see how good these will actually be. Basically, what it will depend on is how good the range is, because I think it was a little bit too good back in Modern Warfare 2, but like I said, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. And then finally, we've got the new sniper rifle, the S-TAC Aggressor, and this one says it's a bolt-action sniper rifle, so assumably it'll have the exact same damage profile as the M40. In other words, it kind of looks like an intervention-esque type of sniper rifle, so you're pretty much looking at a belly button and up one-shot kill, which is a pretty good sniper rifle, not much different than things we already have in the game. So as we know, in Modern Warfare Remastered, there's different types of supply drops. So far, we've had the Lion Strike, Arctic Wolf, and now the new one is called the Copperhead Supply Drops. Now, this is where you get the new three weapons out of, and there's also new items like new melee weapons, new camos, new weapon kits, that kind of thing, all for this event and all in these new supply drops. And then we have Infinite Warfare. So as you can probably tell by what I've been uploading to the channel, I really haven't been playing much Infinite Warfare lately, but I would say as of this update, this is a pretty damn good update for everything that they added. So what did they add? The first thing that they added was bounties in zombies. So we kind of knew this was coming for a while, just like they have weekly content contracts in multiplayer now they have them in zombies and they seem pretty refreshing for the zombies community and another way to earn keys and salvage the next thing they added is hero rigs and basically what these are is the way of completely changing the way your character looks now for example we have warfighters is omar Mercs is Reyes, Synaptic is Ethan, and FTL is Salter. So all of these are characters from Infinite Warfare, but then we got the two really cool ones in my opinion. Striker, you can look like Price, and finally Phantom, you can look like Ghost. And in my opinion, those two are the coolest out of all of them. And as far as what I've seen, I believe these are just changes to the way the head looks on the combat rig. I can't really tell a big difference in the body, it just looks like a head to me. 
And then we got three new weapons, and this one was actually kind of a little bit surprising to me, because two of the weapons are actually sniper rifles. So the first weapon we got here is the Trek 50. This, in my opinion, is my favorite weapon they've added so far. Basically, this is a single-fire ballistic sniper rifle, almost identical to the Moors from Advanced Warfare. So you load one bullet in and fire one bullet at a time. And it's always a one bullet kill. I have not got one hit marker with this weapon. And I've played probably about four or five games with it and did really well with it. Now the one negative about this weapon is there is no aim assist. Is that a bad thing? A little bit, especially compared to the other sniper rifles in this game that have a lot of aim assist. But if you played a lot of Black Ops 3, in Black Ops 3, snipers actually didn't have aim assist. Which means if you're good with the sniper rifle in Black Ops 3, you're going to be good with the Trek 50. After that, we have the Protus or Proteus. I'm not 100% sure how to say this one, but this one is a sniper shotgun combo. So basically, if you hold down triangle, it will switch between a sniper or a shotgun. Now... I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm pretty sure when you're shooting the sniper rifle, you're technically still shooting a shotgun bullet, which means you're shooting buckshot, which was making me find that I got a ton of hit markers, even to the point where if someone was really far away from me, I was getting two hit markers before I would get a kill on the third time I shot. The reason for this is because buckshot spreads out between many different kind of pellets and if you're far away it's hard to hit all the pellets therefore doing 100% of the damage. I'm not 100% sure about this all I know is with this weapon I was getting a lot of hit markers and out of the three weapons that they added in my opinion this is the worst one. Now what I will say a tip when using this weapon is be close to your target because I found I got much more one shot kills with both the shotgun and the sniper rifle the closer I was to my enemy so I really do think that range matters with this weapon where normally with a sniper rifle it doesn't really matter how far you are away from the person if they're far away it's a sniper you're going to kill them not with this weapon and the final weapon we got is the m127 aka the model 1887 it's a lever action shotgun and it's pretty good i wouldn't say it's an amazing weapon i wouldn't say it's a horrible weapon it's just a good shotgun and this weapon what i found is it really doesn't make a difference whether you aim down sights or just fire from the hip all I would say with this weapon is just fire from the hip, try to make as many of the pellets from the shotgun hit as possible, and overall, it has pretty good range, it's a pretty good shotgun, that's really all there is to say about it. And the final thing that they added was new rig gear. And what I mean by this is they basically added in hero gear to Infinite Warfare. This is probably my favorite thing that they added in this update. So there is now gold, diamond, solar, and finally black sky body and heads for all rigs. The best part about this is none of these are received through supply drops. They are all received by completing challenges. So how do you get all of these? So first of all, to get gold, all you have to do is complete all of the challenges for either the head or the body of the rig. To get diamond, you have to get both the head and the body gold for a single rig. To get solar, you have to get diamond on every single rig. And then to get black sky, you have to have solar and then on top of that, get five kills with every single rig in one game. So every single rig, you got to get five kills with it, die, switch your rig, and then get another five kills with that rig. It's really cool, and I'm really looking forward to grinding this out and trying to get the Black Sky loot for your rigs. And none of it, none of it can be received through supply drops. That is my favorite part about it. But guys, that is all of the information we have so far. The one other thing we got today is data mined from the files and the update in Infinite Warfare. We got images of the DLC 3 maps, and I'm just going to flash them on screen right here. So pause the screen if you want to see them, because I don't actually know if I'm allowed to show them yet. So, I don't know, press pause if you want to see them, and hopefully we can talk about them tomorrow, once I'm kind of more sure whether I will get a copyright strike or not. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, it would be fantastic if you could hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as we've got much more Days of Summer content coming very soon, and more Black Ops 3 content coming on the 11th of July, so stay tuned for that. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out. Yes.